Good morning. Uh, first, I want to thank everyone for joining us. I'm very pleased to uh, be joined here today with New Jersey Transit here right in the heart of Hoboken on, a, on a, actually a beautiful, beautiful fall day. Uh, first, let me thank all, uh, start off by saying how much we really appreciate uh, Governor Phil Murphy, all the staff at New Jersey Transit, and especially New Jersey Transit President Kevin Corbett's partnership in improving our mass transit infrastructure here in our Mile Square. I also want to uh, give a special thanks to our city staff, uh, specifically Director Ryan Sharp of the Department of Transportation and Planning, as well as our planner, uh, Greg Franchisi, who's with us here today. Before President Corbett provides an overview of some of the substantial upgrades on our 126 bus line, I want to commend him and his team for everything they've done to help assist our residents during this co coronavirus pandemic. They've done so much to ensure that our frontline and essential workers have the necessary transportation to get to the city and, our com and keep our communities, not just in Hoboken, but the entire, um, the entire state of New Jersey safe. Uh, now, to the reason we're here today, to provide an overview of our 126 bus line improvements, I want to in introduce New Jersey Transit President Kevin Corbett to the podium. Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and uh, as Ravi has my personal cell phone number, anytime there's an issue with New Jersey Transit, believe me, I know about it right away. So, uh, uh, but uh, seriously, certainly uh, appreciate the great partnership we've had with the Mayor and uh, the, the city for, uh, you know, Hoboken's such a critical part of New Jersey Transit's uh, operations, both on rail and bus. But I think, you know, today, as the mayor touched on, um, there is uh, certainly the 126 is one of the busiest routes, if not the busiest route that we have uh, in New Jersey Transit. And if you, if you look at, uh, you know, where we are on what has happened uh, with, by moving, you, you see right behind, we have one of our articulated buses. And uh, if you look at the, uh, this stop has moved from 6th Street and we've added two new stops as well, one between 7th and 8th and one at 2nd and Willow. These changes will increase efficiencies in services as the buses travel uptown and will also reduce the lines and the wait time that uh, uh, many of us were experiencing before uh, with the uh, COVID pandemic. I think also, uh, as I touched on the articulated buses, for those who don't know what that is, by the way, the long, this is one here, that's sort of accordion-like middle. And what that allows for is not just that we're adding more stops, <clears throat> but also with, as we've introduced the articulated buses, uh, they, the capacity is 60% greater. We have roughly 100 passengers on articulated bus versus 60 on our regular buses. So that also allows, it, it'll be a significant improvement in our capacity of serving on the 126 route. Uh, aside from the capacity, uh, these buses also have many new customer amenities such as U USB charging ports, improved intercom system, LED lighting, uh, low floors allowing for quicker boarding and exiting, uh, also with automated wheelchair ramps, uh, you're free to come take a look afterwards, uh, and indoor, in, inside camera systems improve safety and security and ensure that bus operators are better informed of, of their surroundings. Um, I think, you know, of course, one of the other benefits which sort of goes without saying is that by retiring older buses, as we bring in these newer buses, you get buses that are more mecha mechanically reliable and it really helps improve the mean distance between breakdowns, one of our key measures in transit. Uh, so that, you know, the a younger fleet, just as if it was your own personal cars, you know, the maintenance cycle uh, really uh, improves uh, as well our performance. Um, modernizing our bus network, I should touch on, is not just these uh, few stops at one, uh, on the 126, you know, we do have t approximately 2,300 buses on 253 routes throughout the state. That's covering more than 6,000 miles. And one of the key strategy uh, elements that when we came out in June with our first ever 10-year strategic plan, you know, <coughs> known as NJT 2030, uh, that we released in June, was really to look at our bus network and see what we could do to completely reimagine and redesign it throughout the state. And the first phase of that redesign work which will focus on Newark, and then the second phase will be study on Hoboken and Jersey uh, City. 
And I should also make a quick point out and thank a lot of the key, key staff from New Jersey Transit are here today. Mike Kilcoin, head of bus, uh, Jim Sincaglia, head of rail, uh, Anthony Greco, who's uh, head of comms, uh, Eric DeLeo, who is uh, in charge of capital construction, and right behind him is Jeremy Colangelo, who's involved with a, a lot of the coordinate. he's the head of planning and does organize a lot of the planning efforts here. So this redesign has, really has the potential to transform Hoboken's bus network uh, holistically and meet the demands, both current demands as well as the anticipated demands throughout the city. So uh, please stay tuned. We have uh, more plans and projects on the way uh, to improve service throughout the state, particularly right here in Hoboken. And I would say uh, an example of that aside from bus, I do have to put a plug for our rail division since Jim's here, uh, that uh, if you look just down at the uh, our Hoboken terminal, right now currently going on is a long slip fill and rail enhancement project filling in the former barge canal adjacent to the south side of the terminal to eliminate that as a conduit for floods uh, which of course we saw so uh, it was so impactful obviously during sandy but even in other other major storms uh, and aside from filling the canal it's going to be elevated six tracks which will be fully ada compliant uh, compliant with ada accessible platforms and that project, uh, we actually gave the notice to proceed and started right during the middle of the pandemic and is now underway. So it's an important resiliency project that will really help mitigate uh, flooding in the future, as well as be a major customer uh, improvement for uh, people using the Hoboken Rail Terminal. Uh, and you can re uh, please, you know, you can look at all our projects in our, our capital plan, uh, the five-year capital plan, first uh, five-year capital plan for New Jersey Transit. Uh, we uh, issued that in June as well, and it's on uh, $17 billion uh, of capital infrastructure investments that we need to be making. And you can visit our njtplans.com uh, for uh, all details on both our capital plan and strategic plan. So uh, certainly invite everyone to take a look at that. And uh, again, this is a great day to be here, uh, Mayor. Thanks so much. Uh, you know, certainly the 126 is an indispensable bus route. And I, I do believe, as we were talking earlier, as we come out of uh, COVID, I think, you know, uh, we were talking and the mayor about, uh, and the councilman of, if you look at after 9-11, a lot of people were, say, moving out of the region and they thought things weren't, you know, we weren't going to be bounced back. There wouldn't be any tall buildings built. And you look what's happened, you know, a few years after that. I have no doubt that we will see, as the economy picks back up, uh, when a vaccine comes, that we will be back to having heavy loads on the 126 and all our other services. So we are planning to be ahead of that curve when that, as, as people come back to the system. So with that, Mayor, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, President Corbett. I know that New Jersey Transit sometimes, you know, gets the short end of the stick uh, from the public, but it's so important I, I want to emphasize this. It's so important to recognize those times and those instances which are far more greater than many believe where transit is going above and beyond the call of duty to improve service on their in transportation facilities. And that's exactly what they're doing here today. And to New Jersey Transit, we are very thankful here in Hoboken for your partnership on this project here today. A little over a year ago, Hoboken commissioned a study to analyze data from the 126 bus route to find ways to improve service on the 126 bus line. We commissioned this study and over the course of a year met with New Jersey Transit to find ways to increase and improve service on this specific line. Over that time, an extensive collaboration of staff from both the City of Hoboken and New Jersey Tra Transit resulted in the improvements that you see here today. These new bus stops will make an important quality of life benefit for Hoboken residents, making it safer to board the bus and easier for our residents to get to work during rush hour. While there were a number of improvements associated with these new bus stops, as mentioned by President Corbett, I want to re-emphasize one important aspect. In addition to splitting up the long lines uh, right behind me at 6th and Clinton, uh, at the, the 6th and Clinton bus stop, which has traditionally been one of the longest lines during the morning rush hour period, uh, this new bus stop here will reintroduce layover, layover capacity, which essentially allows buses, including the longer articulated buses that you see behind me,
to use the extended stopping space here to enter the route farther uptown completely empty to pick up passengers and alleviate longer lines further north when needed. That's a short way of, or that's a long way of saying we're making the system a lot more efficient uh, in terms of uh, picking up passengers uptown um, when lines lead up, when uh, capacity leads up, uh, when they get uptown. The lack of dedicated curbside space in this area of town has also made it more difficult and less efficient, leading to overcrowding of full bus stops, frequently bypassing the uptown stops. Now, with these longer bus stops, the 126 line will now have capacity for more buses during peak, peak periods to accommodate greater ridership and result in reduced wait times. This is a win-win for Hoboken and the 126 bus. And as, direct, as President Corbett noted, these improvements are especially critical during this pandemic to allow for better service and more capacity and room for social distancing and reducing the angst that riders have with an overcrowded bus. The bus stop at 5th and Clinton has been designed with a longer bus stop to accommodate multiple buses and articulated buses. I thank New Jersey Transit for prioritizing the 126 bus line for these new modern buses. These buses also coincide with Hoboken's repaving project, which was just, which was just completed for this section of Clinton Street and incorporated the striping of the bus stops you hear today. We purposely implemented these changes with our re repaving project to help make a seamless transition to these new bus stops for riders and the general public. To conclude, I once again not only want to thank Governor Phil Murphy and President Corbett for these great improvements to our 126 bus line, but I want to thank each and every one of New Jersey Transit staff at the agency for working behind the scenes when the cameras are not on and, and the public doesn't always get to see that to make this all a reality. We couldn't do it if it wasn't for you. In urban environments like Hoboken, it's just simply not as simple as just adding a bus stop to a point on a map. It requires more time, collaboration, and on the ground analysis, and more. And you all have done it so quickly, so efficiently, and in seamless collaboration with our, ha our staff here in Hoboken. So to, to both President Corbett and the New Jersey staff, I just want to say thank you very much. And with, with and with that, and with that, I would like to introduce our assemblywoman from the 33rd Legislative District, uh, Annette Shaparo. She's been a champion of all things Hoboken, all things 33rd District. Uh, so I'd like to her to come to the podium to say a few words. Assembly Member Sh Shaparo. Thank you, Mayor. This was obviously not meant for me, but. <laughs> Um, I want to thank um, President Corbett and his amazing staff at New Jersey Transit. I'll make this short and sweet. A lot has been said and um, I just want to let you know that as much as was said today, there's so much work that goes into it that the public does not see. It's never an easy transition, just um, magically pop up the bus and clear the streets. Obviously there will be some people that are not happy, but it's for the greater good of Hoboken. This has been needed for a long time, as you know. we've. I, I, can, I can only imagine how many emails and calls everyone has received um, with the people that were not happy, the commuters, the commuters, the residents of Hoboken. The lines were just tremendous. Hot sun, rain, cold, it didn't matter. They had to wait. It didn't matter how early they got. They couldn't get on the bus. It was just a, a need that was, it was tremendous. We needed this. This is something not that we just didn't want. We needed it. 
and we're so happy and grateful that New Jersey Transit came through and that the mayor worked with New Jersey Transit, that we all work together as a member of the Transportation Committee. It is important to me, it is important to this community, and I know that we can get all this done and people will be happy because the bottom line is, they just want to get on the bus. They don't want to hear none of this. They just want to get on the bus and get to work stress-free. So we're happy to deliver that, and um, thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Assemblywoman, for those eloquent, eloquent remarks. Uh, next, I want to introduce uh, our fifth ward council member, Philip Cohen. Uh, Councilman Cohen's uh, ward um, is a part of some of the improvements further uptown at uh, 7th and 8th Street. And I'd like the councilman to uh, come up to the podium if he has a mind to say a few words. Councilman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my name is Phil Cohen. I represent the 5th Ward City Council of Hoboken. Uh, just before I talk about this Clinton Street improvement, which is really wonderful and it's going to be really well received by the folks who live uptown who I represent, just a little history for myself. I've been a commuter on the 126 for over, for over 20 years. I work in Midtown Manhattan and I remember after 9-11, President Corbett talked about what happened after 9-11. The path was shut down and the only way that Hoboken commuters could get into Manhattan was on the 126 bus. And New Jersey Transit responded then after 9-11 by increasing the number of buses and articulated buses and the service on Washington Street that made a huge difference for commuters who were coming into Hoboken and really recognized the importance of the 126 line. And I think history is happening again. Here we are in the middle of a national pandemic a major crisis where ridership is down and people are questioning whether we really need to have additional service and New Jersey Transit is stepping up and providing increased service for the people of Hoboken. Mayor Bala and, and Assemblywoman Chaparro refer to the lines on Clinton Street. I can tell you when I was running for city council last year I had lots of opportunities to talk to voters on their way into New York City when they were waiting at 9th and Clinton and 11th and Clinton waiting for the bus to come and those lines would stretch around the block often. Didn't matter if it was a rainy day or a sunny day, a cold day or a hot day. And uh, for me as a candidate, it was a great thing <laughs> because I got to talk to a lot of people and they were stuck. Uh, but that was not where they wanted to be. They didn't want to be talking to a politician. They wanted to be, as Assemblywoman Chaparro said, they wanted to be on the bus going to work. So for the people at 9th and, and Clinton and 11th and Clinton, residents of the 5th Ward who are my residents, uh, by having a short-term layover space here at, at the 6th and Clinton location, here at the 5th and Clinton location, it will allow for introduction of empty buses that will come uptown that have made such a big difference on Washington Street, and I know it's going to make a huge difference for the residents of the 5th Ward here in Hoboken on Clinton Street. So to New Jersey Transit, to President Corbett, to your team at New Jersey Transit, thank you so much. Uh, it's easy to retrench when times are hard. It's difficult to plan for the future, knowing that we're going to come back and we're going to come back strong. Hoboken strong, New Jersey strong. Thank you, New Jersey Transit. I'm looking forward to the day when we have no lines on 9th and 11th and happy customers on these brand new articulated buses. Thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, uh, thank you, Councilman. Ne next up, and uh, to round it out, is our final speaker, a dedicated a activist of our neighborhood, and someone who has been passionate uh, in advocating for alternative transportation op options, as well as mass transit infrastructure, Chris Adair. Uh, she is the president of Bike Hoboken and a rider of the 126 bus. Uh, Chris, if you mind, uh, say, come up and say a few words. My name is Chris Adair and I am on the Hoboken Vision Zero Task Force. I'm also on the Port Authority Bus Advisory Council, and as well as being the president of Bike Hoboken. And maybe most importantly, I was also, up until very recently, a regular rider of the 126, uh, right here on Clinton and the return trip on Willow. While bicycles and safe bicycle infrastructure are typically my primary focus. I believe that public transportation has a critical role in allowing people a safe, efficient, and reliable alternative mode of transportation. 
The 126 averages 9,000 morning passengers on weekdays. That is a lot of Hoboken residents that rely on this service. And according to New Jersey Transit, we just heard earlier, it's actually one of their most heavily used routes in the system. Projects like this have to be a top priority. We cannot function if every single one of our 53,000 residents gets in their car. We cannot have a car-led recovery. Reallocating curb space to prioritize bus stops like this adding an additional stop. That all allows larger articulated buses like we see behind me, the space they need to pull into stops and safely load and unload passengers. It will also allow for more passengers to spread out while they're waiting. There are long lines for these buses and in today's COVID world, we need the space to socially distance. Having this extra curb space will help with that. I liked that you had referenced it's for the greater good and I think that's really important to keep in mind here. These buses serve a greater good. As people begin to slowly return to commuting in New York City, and it's going to happen, New Jersey Transit plays a critical role in moving people safely and efficiently. I'd like to thank the City of Hoboken, I'd like to thank New Jersey Transit, the Department of Transportation here, um, the administration and everybody that worked on this for making safe mobility a priority. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Chris. Uh, that, that wraps up the speaking portion. If uh, there are any questions from the media, we'll take a couple questions. At, and, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, Jeff? Uh, you know, I can't give you numbers uh, specifically, but uh, if you look at uh, 9,000 riders, uh, Hoboken is a town of uh, 50,000 people. So you're talking about, you know, a substantial portion of the population, uh, and that's that's growing and growing. As Councilman Cohen had said, uh, you know, the the lines literally would snake through blocks and blocks um, and when it's raining when it's cold um, you know it, it creates a very difficult condition for mass transit commuters that's why these changes um, are so important to allow as Chris said socially distanced uh, waiting in line hopefully low uh, uh, um, less lines all of that uh, to put together makes a difference and I would just end by saying that Hoboken has the highest percentage of commuters in the country, not in New Jersey, but in the country who rely upon mass transit to get to and from work. We can't forget that. When we think about, you know, a parking space versus a bus, um, or we have to make choices that not everyone might be happy about, just remember, in the entire United States, we have the highest percentage of people who rely upon these buses, these trains, the light rail, the ferry to get to and from work. Uh, so I think that's a very important point as well. If anyone else wants to add, otherwise we'll go to the next question. Today instead of what? Uh, you know, we, we uh, wanted to make sure that uh, these buses, and they, they started their operation this morning. Uh, so we want to make sure we had this event today because this is the kickoff, the so-called, um, you know, mass transit ribbon cutting of this line and this, these improvements. So that's why we chose today.